What's up YouTube, Crack the Cars here, happy Tuesday. Now in today's video, we're finally gonna be getting the Civic ready to run E85. I'm gonna be kinda walking you through the whole process, so if you ever wanna convert your Civic to E85 or any flex fuel setup, hopefully this video can help you out. All right, so here's a quick layout of the parts we're gonna be using today. I'll be sure to put the part numbers in the description down below. Starting off, we got this GM ethanol content sensor hooked up with two quick connect to dash 6 an adapters here to use with my fuel system i've got this harness here this is nice because from the sensor it gives power output and ground and between your power and output it has an inline resistor so this is a specialty harness very important it's going to save us a lot of time right here we have the connector that's going to allow us to connect the end of our harness onto the main board on our ecu we'll be showing you guys that later as well and obviously you're gonna be wanting a Honda S300. Um, for this tutorial, the S300 V3 is gonna be your best bet and the simplest setup. And I've got some more Dash 6 fittings here just to help adapt um, fitting this properly to my fuel system. All right, so we'll start off this install by trying to find a good spot to plumb in my sensor here. Um, obviously, I got everything zip tied together right now, so let me clean this up real quick. So taking a quick look at my fuel setup here, I've got a Fuel Lab three port fuel pressure regulator. I've got a video on how to install this. I'll put that in the description as well. But basically the setup here is you got this vacuum line going to my intake manifold. This is my feed line coming from my fuel pump. This is the return line going to the fuel tank. And this line right here goes up and feeds my fuel rail. And basically, you want to install your ethanol content sensor in line with the return line going back to the tank. So I've got a couple adapters and some more of this Dash 6 line. So hopefully I can figure something out, get this all to work. All right guys, so that wraps up the mechanical side of things. Brackets looking good. This is plumbed in nice and sturdy. None of the lines are rubbing on each other or anything like that. Cleaned up significantly, especially with the line going up to the fuel rail. Now it's time to move on to the wiring. So taking a look at our wire harness here, obviously this is the part that's gonna connect to the ethanol content sensor we just installed. And since most of this wire is gonna be exposed in the engine bay, I'm gonna be slipping over some of this uh, heat shrink tubing just to help weatherproof it. There we go. I'm a lot more comfortable with that. Not only does it keep the wires protected, but it keeps them nice and organized. So now I'll just take the ends of the wires here, fish them down the grommet with all these other cables that are going to my ECU. So now we can go inside the car. Here's our wires right here. Go ahead and pull our ECU out of there. Oh, where the heck did I put that? Got your ECU. So let's pop this cover off here. Just one, two, three, four, five Phillips head screws. Voila. Now when hooking up to the analog inputs on our board here, we're actually only gonna use two wires. The analog input zero 
and the ground. So for our plug here, we can get rid of all these wires in between and only use the far left and the far right one. So now I'm just gonna deep in all these wires that I'm not using. All I do is push in on this little metal tab here and then push back and the wires pop right out. So you may have noticed that my analog zero wire right here, I switched it out for a white wire. That's because on our E85 content sensor harness, uh, the white wire is the output. So just did this to color match. So now I'll just plug this in here. So now we can go ahead and connect the black and white wire from the analog plug to the black and white wire from the ethanol content sensor. Um, the best way to do this to get like a nice secure connection is to strip off the insulation, solder them together and put some heat shrink over it. So I think that's what we're going to do. And that is all we gotta do inside of there. So we can go ahead and put the cover back on. So now that we got our ground and our sensor wire hooked up, the last one to hook up is this VCC wire right here. And the best place to hook this one up close by is the A25 wire on your stock harness here. So that's gonna be the top right wire on the A plug. It's the one that goes to the top right pin on that big socket right there. Basically, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna cut this, strip off the insulation, and solder these together. So now that we're all done making connections, we can go ahead and put our ECU plugs back in. And this is where you can finally plug in your laptop. And I'll show you the final step that you gotta do on your computer. All right, so on your laptop, you can go ahead and open up the S Manager software. Then you can go ahead and load up your current calibration file. Since I'm not hooked up to my car right now, I'll just say that I'm hooked up to a stock B16 engine. Now the main key is you wanna to go to the flex fuel tab here. So click on that. So then you're gonna go ahead, hit the down arrow and select digital S300 AN0. Now like I was saying earlier, this only works if you've got the Honda S300 V3 ECU. And it's kind of a weird setup because if you remember on that board, they were all analog inputs. And what the S300 V3 is able to do is take that signal coming out of the uh, GM ethanol content sensor, which is a 50 to 150 hertz range, and it's actually able to convert that to an analog input so you can plug it in directly to your ECU. So yeah, it works out pretty slick. And I think these days, if you do buy a Honda out of ECU, I'm pretty sure they all come as the S300 V3. Um, so hopefully this works out for you. Otherwise, there is other options. Um, but I believe if you do any of these other options, you need to run a ethanol content analyzer on top of the sensor. But yeah, for us, all we gotta do, click that one, and then everything else is inputted automatically. So that's real slick, and that's all we gotta do here. So, all right guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. Our Civic is now officially ready to run on E85, which is super exciting. If you have any questions about the process of today's video, about running the fuel lines, the S Manager software, or any of the solder connections or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment down below or hit me up on Instagram at afton.voit.ej8. We'll get you helped out. Um, other than that, I'll put a quick little sketch and an overview at the end of the video just so you have something to reference while you're working on your own car. Uh, if you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We're on our way to 1,000 subscribers, so me and Gideon are both super stoked for that. 
I'll see you next Tuesday. And if you stick around till Friday, uh, we post videos every Tuesday and Friday. If you haven't picked up on that yet, Gideon's working on an LS swapped RX-7 if you're into that kind of stuff. So yeah, feel free, go check that out. And that's all, I'll see you next time, bye. So just to kind of give you guys a look at the bigger picture, I made this quick sketch here. So this is our GM ethanol content sensor, reading the ethanol content from our fuel return line that we plumbed in. On the sensor itself, you'll have the VCC ground and out all labeled, which is super nice. On our harness, we had a 2.4K resistor built in. I believe if you've got a JB tuned harness or an HA Motorsports E85 conversion harness, they will have that uh, resistor hooked up so you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, you're going to have to pick up one of these resistors, solder one end to the VCC and one end to the out wire, which isn't that big of a deal. So today we ran our 12 volt source connecting the VCC. So we took that wire, connected it to A25 on the ECU, which is the switched 12 volt source. We took our ground wire, ran that inside our ECU, so we had to take the cover off and connected it to our Honda chip on the analog input board. We connected that to the ground input. And then the output coming out of the ethanol content sensor, we hooked that one up to the AN0 analog input inside of our ECU. So pretty straightforward. It was only three solder joints today to connect uh, the two wires coming out of the pigtail from this little Honda board and to connect the uh, VCC wire to the factory harness going into A25.